Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at the fun key S. It's definitely the smallest retro gaming handheld I've ever used. In this video we'll unbox it, set it up, install a few games, and check it out. Let's get started. I backed this project on Kickstarter, and due to part shortages, it took a little while for it to get here. In the box, you get a micro USB to USB Type A for charging and data transfer, as well as some additional inserts if you want to change out the colors of your buttons. Pretty cool. And a pretty nice little manual that kind of steps you through the main functions of the device. Very neat. I'll go ahead and quickly speed through this so you can take a quick look. Now let's open up the Funkey S itself. And yes, it even has a little keychain, which is kind of neat. I doubt I'll use it as a keychain. There are currently three colors available. Original Purple, Retro Gaming Gray, and Atomic Purple, which is the one you'll see in this video. Let's go over a few of the features of this device. The CPU is an ARM Cortex-A7 at 1.2 GHz. It has 64 MB of DDR2 RAM, and it has an internal 32 GB microSD, which is expandable to 128 GB. A 240 by 240 IPS LCD display, a mono speaker, and a 410 mAh battery, which will give you about two hours of playtime. To turn it on, you just open the clamshell. Taking a quick look at the basic operation of the device, if you press and hold the button at the top middle, you can turn on or off the device. A short press will bring up a menu. You have a speaker, a function button, which is typically your select, and using that button, you can adjust the zoom, the aspect ratio, brightness, and volume control as well. And all of those operations can be used while in game. It also has an L1 and an R1 button on the top, Again, the display is a 240 by 240 pixel resolution and a micro USB port on the right side for charging and data transfer. Let's compare the Fun Key S to some recent devices I've reviewed, such as the Nintendo Game & Watch. Folded up, the entire device will just about fit inside the screen, which is kind of interesting. Folded up, it almost takes up a quarter of the screen on the RG351V, and about the same thickness as the display area. On the Odroid Go Super, things are a little bit different. You could fit in probably about two and a half of these units folded across the display. And it's about the same height extended as the display on the Odroid Go Super. There are quite a few emulators already included, such as Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, NES, SNES, Game Gear, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Turbo Graphics, Atari Lynx, Neo Geo Pocket, Wonder Swan Color, and PlayStation 1. So let's say you're playing a game and you want to exit. Simply hit the menu button, press the up button, and go to exit game and press A twice. Whether you're in game or at the launcher, you can press the menu button and adjust the volume by going left or right. Moving up from here will bring you to the power down menu, which you can press A and shut it down if you'd like, or you could just close the lid. You can change the launcher, which we'll do in a minute, or change the themes. We'll go ahead and change the theme to the flat theme and take a brief look at it. And now we'll switch over to another theme, and this one is TFT. You can go ahead and apply it. And I kind of like this one. It's pretty cool. But my favorite is next. We'll hit the menu button again, go to fun key, and I just like purple. <laughs> it's my favorite color. So uh, here we go. Yeah, there's the purple theme. Kind of matches the chassis here. Scrolling up one more brings you the brightness, and you can move left to right to adjust the brightness to your liking. Now let's say you want to copy your own games. Simply plug in your micro USB cable and press the menu button up at the top and move up until you see mount USB then press A two times and switching over to the PC I can see here that the drive if I right click and go to properties has 27.8 gigabytes available 
Looking at the folder structure briefly, we'll go into emulators. And from here, you see all these OPK files. Those are the emulators, and this is where you can add new emulators if you want. Let's take a closer look at the files in the Game Boy directory. If the file name for the ROM matches the file name for the artwork, which is this .png file, then you'll see the box art show up in the front end. To play PlayStation games, you will need to copy the scph10011.bin into the BIOS subfolder under the PS1 emulator, and then you can copy your games over. Now I'll copy over a few SNES games as well, and don't forget to copy the .png files and make sure the file names match up just right if you want box art. Once you're done copying all your games, simply press A to eject two times, and then you can remove the micro USB cable. If you go to funkey-project.com, you'll go to the FunKeyS website that has a lot of great information, including a wiki and very active Discord, and a lot of information that will help you out, including third-party OPK applications that you can install. I did try the MAME emulator, which worked very well, and I'll show you that in a little bit. One thing that's very impressive is this entire project is open source, both the software and the schematics for the hardware. Upgrading the firmware is about as easy as it can be. Just click the link here for the latest firmware, scroll down to the assets down below, and click the link to download the firmware. Once downloaded, simply copy the file to the root of the USB drive, double press A on the eject USB stick, and the firmware will be applied. And now, let's move on to the gameplay. And we'll kick it off with Asteroids on the Game Boy. This is a game I used to play quite a bit on my original Game Boy. It was a lot of fun, and it's a game I haven't played in a while. Now we're playing Miss Pac-Man. Obviously, the buttons are a bit clicky, so something to point out. Now we'll take a look at the NES, and we'll go ahead and pick a game here. We'll pick Galaga Demons of Death. And who can forget this classic, Tetris. Now we'll move on over to the SNES and play some Donkey Kong Country. There is no FPS counter on this device, but playing most games, including most PS1 games, do play relatively well. Now let's slide on over to the Game Boy Advance and check out Super Mario Advance. Now we're looking at Mario Kart Super Circuit. Next up, we have Afterburner on the Sega Master System. And of course, the popular classic Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And lastly, on the PlayStation, 
Crash Bandicoot 3 worked. And of course, I have to throw in a little bit of Tekken 3. <laughs> now let's take a look how you could install MAME and play arcade games. From the FunKey Wiki page, there's a list of third-party OPK applications. From there, you can click the download link to download MAME. Once downloaded and extracted, you can just copy the OPK into the emulator subdirectory. And once you do that, all you have to do is go to the root and create a MAME subdirectory, just like this one. And then inside of there, copy all your game files. And I left mine all the zip files. You don't need to extract them. And if you have the samples, I highly recommend using those because the audio will play a lot better for many of the older games. To get to the MAME emulator, Turn on the device and press the menu button. Move on up to the set launcher and double press A. And that'll bring you into the G Menu 2X launcher. Select main and then the game you want to play. For example, here's Donkey Kong, the original arcade version of Donkey Kong with the samples playing. One thing I want to show you, if your game's over, we'll go ahead and end the game here. You hit the menu button up at the top in order to exit. Move down to exit game and press A. And from there, you can simply press the start button and then the menu button. Then we can switch back to the retro feed menu, which is the one that was playing all the games that you saw up to the point where we were playing main, such as Super Mario Brothers. There are a few additional functions I want to make sure that I demonstrate here. If you want to save the state of your game, you have nine available, and you can go ahead and select it. And to reload it, just hit the menu again, and select load, and you'll see Mario at the bottom again. And if you hold the function key and the X or B button, you can change the brightness level, as well as the display mode by holding function and down. A quick and easy way to pause your game, just close the clamshell. When you're ready to play again, just go ahead and open it up. And it'll remember exactly where you left off. Let's be completely honest. This is a novelty device. It's roughly the size of two quarters, so it's not going to replace your primary handheld. Although it is certainly a device that is small enough to fit easily almost anywhere. The buttons are very close together and not very comfortable to play for an extended period of time. There is no headphone jack or Bluetooth, so you won't be able to hear it well in a noisy environment. And at about 92 US dollars, this is certainly not the cheapest device available either. There are much more powerful devices you can get for around this price. But if you're looking for an extremely small, easy to use retro handheld device, it doesn't get much smaller than this. <laughs> Well, that's it for another video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button. If you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you very soon.